During my series of videos on the restoration of an Admiral 24A12, I showed you one way to restuff capacitors, like I've done over here, which was to cut open the can near the base, pull the top off, remove any residue down here, drill some small holes, feed the capacitor leads through, wrap them around the lugs, solder them on, remove the insides from the can and then glue the can back on. Well, there is another way to do it. As someone reminded me when they left a comment recently. Um, so I thought I'd uh, give you an overview of how uh, to use that technique. These capacitors are called twist locks. So the way these uh, normally mount is there are slots cut in the chassis. These tabs are fed through and then twisted over to hold it in place. I think you can see here, here's one of the twisted over lugs. So to remove these, what you would do is you would unsolder all the connections, untwist the tabs, which are sometimes soldered to the chassis like up here, so you'll need to uh, remove that solder and then unbend the tabs and then pull them out. Make sure you note where the wires went, take some pictures, uh, trace it out to make sure you know how to reconnect it back. That's key, because <laughs> once you remount the cap, you got to hook it back up the way it was. And once you get it out, you should have something that looks like this. This is only a single suction capacitor, so there's only one lug here. Now, the next step is to actually uncrimp the seam instead of cutting the capacitor open. To do that, I use something like a uh, pocket knife. Get the tip of the blade underneath that uh, knurled over seam there and slowly work it in. These are aluminum cans and this ring underneath the aluminum is steel, so uh, it's not too tough once you get it going. The aluminum being much softer will open uh, open up. So you keep working that seam uh, open, working your way around, and eventually you should get to the point where you can pull the steel ring out. Then you get this uh, base out and then you'll expose the same capacitor insides, which you can then remove in the same way. And, uh, well, I'll pick up the video once I'm a little bit further along and I think you get a better idea of what's, what I'm talking about. Well, one other thing I wanted to mention is this is the most unusually labeled capacitor I've come across. Normally it would say something um, like the microfarads and the voltage rating, like maybe 40 microfarads at 400 volts. Instead, this says IMPED, which I assume is short for impedance. 1.0 ohm, 60, and then a squiggle. What I think this is telling me is that it has an, imp an impedance of 1 ohm at 60 hertz, and then 3VNP, uh, I believe, is for 3 volts non-polarized. So uh, this is a type of electrolytic that is not polarized, meaning there is no positive, there is no negative, it doesn't matter, you can have it up either way. You commonly see something like that used in a speaker crossover network. But in this case, it was used as the <laughs> coupling capacitor to the vertical yoke uh, on the vertical output uh, circuitry. I actually found an online calculator for impedance, and when I fed 1 ohm 60 hertz into it, I got about 2600 microfarads. So what I did is I went on to uh, Mauser Electronics website and I was able to find a Nichicon 2200 microfarad 25 volt. This says BP, which is sort of for bipolar, which is the same as NP or non-polarized. I just tacked it in here temporarily and it works just fine. So now that I know that, I went ahead and removed the capacitor so I can put that cap back inside, or I shouldn't say back inside, I will replace the contents of this can with this cap and I can mount it up top and reconnect these leads and it will be a nice neat job I hope. I finished uncrimping the can. I got it started with this pocket knife and I switched to a small uh, flat bladed screwdriver. Worked my way around uncrimping that edge and now that it's opened up I can take the metal ring out and what I've got here is this aluminum foil tab is one side of the capacitor which is pressing up against the metallic uh, can here and the other connection goes to this. 
And now what I'm going to do is heat up this can a bit with a heat gun and try to pull out the insides. It took a while, but I finally got the guts out of that capacitor. This one had quite a bit of tar, so it was a little bit stubborn. What I did is I uh, held the can with uh, some heat resistant gloves and put it on uh, under a heat gun on low heat and slowly and steadily apply a little bit of pressure, kept the heat up and it started to kind of ooze out and then uh, finally pulled on it with some long nose pliers and it slid right out. Uh, you can see all that nasty tar in there. In the past on a couple of these I have gotten all the tar out with lacquer thinner. That takes a lot of solvents, uh, produces a lot of fumes, it's kind of, uh, and you're left with some nasty toxic sludge. So I think this time around, since I'm just putting one small capacitor inside, I'm just going to leave all that tar on the side. Uh, it's already hardened, so it's really not going to cause any problems, I don't think. Which leaves me with the base. I need to cut off and discard this nasty old capacitor. You see this little tab on the side here, that was one contact. And the others, of course this metal stud down here. So I'll uh, unravel this a bit so I can get a better grip on that and then nip it off and then discard these insides. And I'll be able to mount the new capacitor. I cut off the remains of the old capacitor inside and then used uh, some q-tips and lacquer thinner and cleaned up all the tar residue from the base and around the inside lip there. So now I need to attach the new capacitor. Now the stub of the old tab here is aluminum and I can't solder to that. So what I'm going to do is drill a small hole, feed one of the leads through it, wrap it around the tab on the other side which is steel and that I can solder to quite easily. Now for the other lead, which originally would have been connected to the can, I'm simply going to poke it through one of these unused holes here. Now if this was a four section capacitor, in other words all four of these holes had tabs going to various sections of the capacitor, what I would do is drill a fifth hole very near the edge and uh, poke it through that and then wrap it around to one of the mounting studs. So time to uh, get a drill out. And there we are. One remounted capacitor. Now this is the easiest of all possible cases where there's only one cap in here. If there was more than one you might need to do some configuring or some planning that you could fit all the capacitors inside the can and uh, route the leads through and whatnot. In that case I suggest you use um, some heat shrink tubing. I use a little bit on here even though I didn't really need to just uh, for illustrative purposes. And <laughs> before you put this back in the can and recrimp it, by all means chuck, double check, triple check all your wiring. If you've got a capacitor, a ESR meter, whatnot, uh, chuck and make sure that between the common uh, of the can and all the various capacitor tabs you are measuring the correct capacitance and you don't have any excessive leakage currents. This is on the base pretty tight so I don't see any need to really do any kind of bracing or packing but if your capacitor was a bit loose you might want to uh, maybe put some packing material in here so it's not just floating in the can or maybe glue up some epoxy bracing around the base but in this case uh, it's on there pretty solid I'm not really concerned about it so next step is to put it back in the can and then carefully crimp the seal back down now I saw a uh, comment posted which is a great suggestion to use a uh, pipe or hose clamp to get a nice even get nice even pressure around this while it's closing up. So I'm going to go see if I can find one. Uh, if I can't, well, I'll do the best I can. And then uh, yeah, the idea is to crimp it back this carefully back over the way it was as evenly and neat, as neatly as you can, so it looks like it did originally. 
And here we are, one rebuilt capacitor ready for uh, reinstallation. I re-crimped the seam and then polished up the can a little bit with some semichrome and uh, I think it looks real nice. So I'll pop this back in, twist over the, uh, the tabs here, solder it up and let's make sure this set still works. Okay, I've got the capacitor mounted and wired in. So let's see if it works. Turn the lights off so we can see it better. This capacitor is using the vertical output, so if I get a picture and it has some vertical height to it, uh, it will be a successful repair. And indeed I do. working just fine. Let's start check next generation action. So if you need to restuff some capacitors you can either do it this way, a quick and dirty way, cut it off with a wire saw or wire jeweler saw or a hack saw and restuff them from the top down or carefully unsolder the wires below, untwist the tabs, remove the cap and restuff it from the bottom up. Hope you enjoyed this little video on restuffing capacitors.